I liked how fine dining was sort of portrayed, and it's there's something very emperor's new clothes about fine dining. Um, I have limited, but you know, very real fine dining experiences. I lived in Paris for a few years, and um, I've had clients. You know, I worked in several different fields, but there was, you know, there were situations where I had to like take my clients out to um, dinners and lunches in Michelin star restaurants and, you know, do the whole thing where, you know, you do wine pairing and all that. I have never developed a taste for fine dining. Me neither. It, it makes me really uncomfortable because it really feels like a waste of money. And maybe mm -hmm. it's because I don't have a very sophisticated palate because I know people who genuinely enjoy fine dining. They genuinely enjoy weird food mm -hmm. um, and tasting menus and wine pairings and they taste everything and they like the sea foam with the uni mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. cockroaches, which is actually a thing that they served at, mm -hmm. I think, El Bulli or something. I'm a bit of a peasant when it comes to food, and I really, really like mm. cheap local dishes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've never gotten into the fine dining thing. Like you, uh -huh. I was I used to work for a company that used to jet set around mm. and meet music producers and yeah, things like that, yeah. and we would have the best steak in New York City and things yeah. like this. There's certain um, elements of it, like where I'm okay. Uh, I'm like, this is good. Of course, this, I understand of course, that this is yeah. really good, but it's not something that I crave. It's never something right. that I crave. Uh, well, let's just put it this way: if I were to pay my own money, yeah. like I don't think I would do it. It would. I wouldn't do food. Yeah. I don't understand this obsession with with, yeah, like high high level cuisine. I don't get it at right. all. Right. So there, in the movie, Chef Paul talks about how we, you know, those of us who eat to live right yes would never understand like once that base the baseline needs mm -hmm. are taken care of you start hungering for something more right and so that's i think the essence of fine dining according mm -hmm. to this movie um what that is it can depend on the person mm -hmm. um it could be status it could be recognition it could be you know um novelty mm -hmm. and so chef's paul chef paul's thing is to create food that kind of brings out the primitive mm -hmm. you know urges in you within you and the hunger within you right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so his dishes are very meat based mm -hmm. um they seem to be very like you know at one point like he barbecues a an animal i don't know what that was and then people tear into it mm -hmm. like you know with their bare hands Do you remember the spattering of the plate yeah the, to make blood stream across yeah the plate? Yeah. yeah and um and he's got it all over his apron yeah and then so the first task that he tasks aoi with was um the wagyu right he says you have to cook it just enough so that people don't even have to chew yeah, like right. it has to melt in your mouth, mm -hmm. and so she can't do it. Like she has to have like absolute control of the the walk, right? Mm -hmm. And that was very that scene was very whiplashy to me. I was just going to say that. <laughs> so that was very whiplash when you saw that she her arms were spattered with oil, yeah. and that was my first that was my first uh oh uh -huh, moment yeah, when I saw yeah. that because for those of you who haven't heard our talk on whiplash, mm -hmm. we absolutely destroy this movie. Yeah, and. Because we both hate it, and uh -huh. we bonded over our hatred right, for this movie. Right. Yeah, so that was the bloody fingers mm -hmm. on the on the drum kit, as if you have to bleed in order to right. be good. So she has all these burns yeah. on her forearms, and mm -hmm. she was like Some practicing serious freaking third degree burns. On yeah, her arms. flipping the walk for like all night. Second degree burns. Second. Yeah, uh -huh. and then she kind of and she has to learn how to slice the wagyu mm -hmm. just thin enough mm -hmm. so that it would cook the right way. And mm -hmm. she spent like all night doing it, and she yeah. finally does it the mm -hmm. next day or something, right? Um, I don't think I've I've never really cooked, but I don't think skill is acquired overnight. I think it's like exactly. <laughs> I had that same thought. I don't think you can binge no. work on like skill like no. that, right? It just no. comes with like persistent effort. This is what, like. yeah. This is another part of, part of the problem is that everything seemed to happen very easily and yeah, yeah, quickly. Like she learned very fast, even though she was being abused, like as in right, right. as in Whiplash, right? 
Can we talk about the whiplash comparisons a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. How is this movie, and I'm asking you this as an open question, mm -hmm. how is this movie different than Whiplash? It has, it has more of a clear side. Like, it, it's like, you know, oh, that's good, and this is bad. And, like, you know, and Chef Paul was p painted as clearly an abusive mm -hmm. um, party, right? Well, so Very was abusive. the teacher in Whiplash. No, it wasn't clear to some people. Okay. It really anyway, wasn't good. some like genuinely people are out there believing that oh that's a good teacher. No, that's not a good teacher. Right, but that's okay. you know I'm All saying right. that like it's not okay. clear to most people like okay. to to others as much as it was people who to don't know you. music. Yeah. Anyway, um, and also it's up for debate. Like you know some people might genuinely I mean you know whatever floats your boat. People who want to be abused in order to become great. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of, you know, th there's a kung fu movie element to all of this, right? Mm -hmm. Where the You've master, said that a couple of yeah, times, the master, like, makes the pupil do something repetitive for, like, a fortnight or something for no reason. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he comes out like, wow, show, show. Have you seen Karate Kid? Yeah. That was done well. Yeah. Because he said, wax the car. Right. Yeah. And then wax off. Right. Wax on, wax off. Yeah. He didn't fucking punch him in the face. Right. So the Kung Fu movies, usually the the master has very good intentions mm -hmm. for the pupil, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, whereas in this case, or in Whiplash's mm -hmm. case, but the, although that's debatable, there's some weird, like, narcissistic yeah. abuse going on, right? Um, so the narcissist, it was very clear in this movie that it was narcissistic abuse. Whereas in Whiplash, I don't think it was clear to everyone. It's clear to me. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think to you as well. Right. Um, I think that she has a better core than mm -hmm. Miles Teller's character does yeah. in Whiplash. And Miles Teller's character in Whiplash has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. She has redeeming qualities. For sure, yeah. She has, you know, she's, she's bound to her family and... Um, but she does have that thing that Miles Teller's character has, which is, I want to be special. I think at that age, everybody does. I, yeah, but I don't think that's a good message. I don't think that's a good ethics. Well, well yeah, but, that it's, but the reality is, I think the youth mm -hmm. are very much and understandably drawn to those kinds of values. Yeah, and they should be, you know, disabused of those values. And she was in the end. I thought she clearly okay. was. I, I, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, which is, that would be the so primary that's a difference, difference between that's a difference. Whiplash yeah. and this movie. In Whiplash, he wins by imposing a drum solo <laughs> on the rest of the band. <laughs> Again, flipping the middle finger to everybody who is in the band. Right. All the fellow yeah. musicians. Um, she wins, I guess, in a sense, by cooking crybaby noodles. Mm-hmm which is a family recipe. Right. So, but it's not a, so, so this, you know, this is the same thing we got in Ratatouille. It's the mm -hmm. exact same thing. Except Ratatouille handled it much better because it was for somebody else to trigger that Proustian Madeleine mm -hmm. kind of memory trigger. Mm -hmm. In this, it's her own memory. It's her own family recipe. Mm -hmm. I, I guess maybe the combination of ingredients would do that for someone else. Mm -hmm. But it seemed a selfish I think it was sensory just, trigger um, rather than of, yeah. in Ratatouille where he understood that the, that the man, the right, critic, right. would have that yeah. in himself. Right. And I think that this is a fundamental problem with a lot of movies today, mm -hmm. which is it has to come back to what I think is valuable. Mm, okay. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. So and then also, <laughs> the other thing that ends the again spoilers. The other thing that ends it is a um, a call out, a calling him out mm -hmm. on social media in a really awkward moment when the police mm -hmm. walk in <laughs> right <laughs> right at the moment mm -hmm. when everybody sees on their phones. Oh, the cliche! They really shouldn't have done that. We've seen this a hundred times in a movie mm -hmm. where everybody gets bloop bloop bloop, and then right. the the evil guy loses because of social media. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think oh. it was on the news, babe. Yeah, but everybody yeah. was getting bloop bloop bloops. Yeah, it's because it was getting shared. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I didn't. I didn't really. Mm. The, the ending completely fell apart for me. Right. 
I, once again, I don't take any of these Netflix movies seriously. I, I, wa- I really just watch them to, you know, pass time. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that sense, this was like, you know, I could give it a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. I could give, you know, I, I was, I did not regret giving this a try. Yeah, I Which agree. is more than I can say for a lot of Netflix films right now. Mm-hmm. Um, some, some movies, some of the things that I've watched, I wanted my time back. Um, Most of what I watch on Netflix, I mm-hmm. want my time back. Yeah, but I think this is a good start to what I think will be a Thai culture renaissance in the future. Good. Next, you know, the next Thai movie that I see, I hope it's not, doesn't seem like it's constructed in a, in a boardroom somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You, borrowing plots from you know, elements from Whiplash and yeah. taking advantage of the popularity of Thai food mm-hmm. and Thai cuisine mm-hmm. and then pulling from a movie like Ratatouille. Um, but that's going to happen, you know. On Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I didn't really expect that much from it and that's why I'm being like mm-hmm. just so, I, I, I feel very generous. Mm-hmm. Um but I also really like just seeing Bangkok and, um, you know, seeing food. 